Back when everybody started, it was literally whatever you could get. Uh, we didn't have sporting goods stores or anything like that to go purchase bats, so they would literally cut down their own trees or, or they'd whittle them out of whatever they found available, and when it broke, it broke. And the hardest wood was the best wood. So you had people swinging oak, you had people swinging hickory, you had people swinging maple, I mean, just everything around the sun. And hickory was one of the most prevalent because of how hard it was. Well, as the home runs became more and more exciting to the, to the fans and Babe Ruth started really doing his thing, they found out that the bat speed was slowly becoming more and more important than the weight and the density of the wood. So we slowly transitioned away from all your harder density woods like the maples and the hickories and so forth and ended up with ash. It had that flex, it had the ability to hit the ball the farthest and you got really decent yield out of a tree when you were looking for a ball player weight. It's a very small green insect. Uh, the adult is green, that's why it's called emerald ash borer. Um, it's probably half the size of a dime. It's extremely small. It's hard to see uh, unless you're, you know, in a well-infested area. You probably are not likely to actually see the adults flying around. Well, the nature of the problem is, is that uh, when Dutch elm disease came to Illinois uh, back in the 50s and 60s, we started losing a lot of the elm trees. Uh, the ash trees were one of the most popular choices to replace them all. So we ended up with almost 15% of our public tree population is ash. Mm. You know, over 4,000 trees. Mm -hmm. um, and now what's happening now is that, that as they keep spreading and hopping from tree to tree, we're likely to lose all 4,000 of those ash trees. Uh, mm -hmm. All probably within a matter of, you know, 10 or 15 years. was uh, founded in Detroit, uh, the Port of Detroit, in 2001, I think. Um, came in on packing materials from, we think, China. Uh, and what it does is uh, the adults are flying around in the summertime. They lay their eggs on the bark of the ash trees. Once those eggs hatch, uh, the larvae immediately tunnel into the cambium layer of the tree. And as they tunnel around in that cambium layer feeding, uh, they're literally blocking all the pores in that in that layer that transfer the, the water and nutrients up and down the tree. So uh, if you get enough of those larvae in there, they literally choke the tree to death so that nothing's getting from the roots up to the top. And they start their life cycle all over again. The adults, the larvae pop out of the tree, hatch into adults. The adults mate again, lay more eggs, and it just repeats itself over and over again. The North American ash trees do not have resistance. Um, they did some experiments. The, the boar actually prefers green ash over white ash, but if the green ash are gone, they will attack white ash. Mm -hmm. So none of the ash trees in North America are, are resistant. I know they're working on some breeding programs with some of the elms from, uh, or some of the ash trees from, from Asia mm -hmm. that seem to have built up some kind of resistance, but that's going to be years and years away before it's yeah. up and running. There's a definite chance that it will spread all over the country. I mean, it's already into nearly 20 states, all the way from, I think, Minnesota down to Kentucky and Nebraska up to New England, just about. So, mm. and it started in Detroit, so it's it's spreading pretty pretty much unchecked right now. There's no natural predator here in North America, yeah. other than woodpeckers. <laughs> Most of what you're seeing here, these big holes, this is actually where the woodpeckers are trying to get at the larva on the inside of the tree. 
based on this woodpecker damage, you could peel almost any section of this trunk and find galleries underneath where the woodpeckers have been trying to get inside. Yeah. Because they can smell them, even in the middle of winter. Really? Yeah. Really? Even yeah, when that's, they're dormant? I mean. Even when they're, well, the, the larvae are still there. They may almost go into dormancy, but they're still there, and so the woodpeckers can still smell them. Mm -hmm. And they still go after them, especially in the winter time when there's not much else to eat for them. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it's one of the things we look for, especially in winter, is woodpecker activity on ash trees. That is a is a pretty sure sign that, that it's infested. So what has happened is we migrated to ash, and for about 60, 70 years, ash was the king. The other thing that's kind of creeping up is the emerald ash borer. And there is that chance in the next 15 to 20 years, we may not have the ability of the ash trees that we have today. It's a threat in the way we do business today. 50% uh, of the wood that we still sell is, uh, the bats that we still sell are still ash. It's uh, a lower in the major league market. They're probably, I think, right around 60% maple. And, uh, but what we're doing today is starting to work with all the different species that are available that fit in the same weight densities. But the USDA is doing a great uh, job of working with the forestry departments and trying to come up with a solution before it, it uh, takes over. Uh, we're finding out that in the forest up in Pennsylvania, New York, the little emerald ash borers on the outlines, outliers of all the, the forest, and they aren't going down in, to where it's dark and, less, and much more dense. As long as that trend keeps up, we don't know how long we have. But the, the name of the game is to find out what's next, stay ahead of it, and don't let it happen. You just gotta make sure that you have a plan. In a perfect world, we come up with a way to eliminate it or, or control it, and we don't have to worry about it.